Hey everyone, I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash and this is a quick tutorial about sleeve caps. You can see right now I'm wearing my Rumo sweater, but it only has one sleeve. And I thought this might be a great opportunity to uh, give you guys a quick demo on how I do uh, modification on a lot of garments and do sleeve caps and knit them from the top down. Uh, so in this video, I will talk a little bit about why uh, I use that technique and then I'll jump right in and show you how I'm going to do it on this sweater, including some stitch counts and some percentages and ideas like that. So let's get started. Before jumping into the actual technique, I want to take a moment to say that top down short row sleeve caps are not right for every garment. And if you're going to modify a garment that a designer has um, specifically uh, requested or specced out a set in sleeve, you gotta think a little bit about it because they may be, uh, they may be designing a garment with a set in sleeve for a reason. If the garment is knit out of, say, cotton or linen, uh, maybe even superwash yarn or alpaca, something that's gonna require a little more stability around the shoulders so that it doesn't just stretch and kind of drape everywhere, you might want to stick with whatever the designer intended, which may very well be a set in sleeve. Those seams will give you so much structure. But if you're working with a sweater that you think can handle a little bit of drape, you like the look of the set in sleeve and you think it'll kind of fit with the design, then go for it. Uh, and what we're going to do right now is get into some of the percentages and the actual knitting. So let's go. So let's take a look at some of the numbers first. Uh, this is a basic armhole design here, right? Just pretend it's a circle. Uh, this would be your armpit down here. This would be your top of shoulder up here. And what we're gonna look at is how many stitches to pick up and where to place our markers for our short rows. Now very basically, German short rows are going to have you knit back and forth. You're gonna start, uh, if you're knitting all the way around in this direction, you're going to knit to wherever your marker is. You're going to turn around and knit back. And then you're going to knit back, picking up an extra stitch, and back, picking up an extra stitch. So basically you're creating this elongated bit of fabric right here, all of this, and that is going to be your sleeve cap. And you're accomplishing that by knitting back and forth. So let's talk a little bit about the numbers and how we're going to place our markers. For this particular sleeve, I'm looking at um, the gauge that I've used, and I'm thinking about um, also what the designer's expectations are. Now, the, de the designer's expectations are that this sleeve is going to be knit from the bottom up, and that it's going to be a traditional uh, sleeve cap design, something like this, right? Uh, so what I can look at is what the designer's expectations are for the number of stitches at the top of the sleeve. Her expectations are that it's going to be somewhere in the high 50s. So I've assumed about 58 stitches as my total number that I'm going to pick up. And I know I'm using my US 6 needles, which is what I've been using on the rest of the pattern. And I know that I'm going to be doing German short rows, as I just explained to you. So the basic principle is that, uh, and this is something that I learned from doing a bunch of different patterns like this, most uh, recently Isabel Kramer's alias pattern. The principle seems to be about a fifth of your total number of stitches should be at the top here for the beginning of your short rows. So if I have 58 stitches total, if I take a fifth of that, that's going to be 12 stitches. And that's nice and easy to divide into six and six. So this is my top of shoulder. And so I'll make sure that I have six stitches here and six stitches here before I place my markers. Now, when you're, when you're picking up and knitting stitches, you are very likely starting down here at the armpit. So here's what you're gonna do. At the beginning of your round, you're going to pick up your stitches in your armpit and you're gonna think to yourself, okay, I've got 12 up here. That means that I have 46 stitches left. I'm gonna divide 46 in half which is gonna be 23. So I'm gonna have 23 stitches from here to here and 23 stitches from here to here, roughly. I mean, we all know that a stitch here or there, it'll be okay. Um, so if you pick up your stitches, you're gonna to wanna to think about where you're gonna to wanna to end your short rows. That I think is a little bit more up to you, um, but I'm gonna put eight stitches down here. You could probably very comfortably put anywhere between four to eight stitches down here in your armpit. I'm going to pick up four along the um, very bottom of my armpit, and that means that I'm going to pick up 19 over here. I'm going to place a marker, pick up another six, 
pick up another six, place a marker, and then I'm gonna knit 19, and or pick up 19 and pick up four. Now in this particular pattern, uh, I'm dealing with a garter stitch in the flat, um, and I'm switching to a garter stitch in the round. So you have to make sure that you, if you're gonna pick up these stitches in the knit, the first time around, you get a, then I've got to purl my first row. That's not necessarily what's gonna happen with all of the patterns that you do short row uh, sleeve caps with. That's just particular to my, my pattern. So I'm gonna have picked up all these uh, stitches knit wise. Then I'm gonna purl one row because that's gonna produce the garter effect that I need um, since I'm working in the round. If you were uh, doing a stockinette stitch, you would just knit the next round just to secure all the stitches. Then, I'm gonna knit up to my first, my second marker here. We'll call this marker number two. We'll call this marker number one. I'm gonna knit all the way to marker number two, and I'm going to turn my work using a German short row, knit back across these 12 stitches to this marker, turn my work using a German short row, and then I'm gonna knit back to this first German short row, which will be a double stitch. That's how German short rows, they look like two stitches kind of sitting together. And I'm gonna knit past that stitch and knit another stitch. Because you, as I said here, you're kind of constantly working to make this sleeve cap longer and longer. So it's gonna extend here, extend here, extend here, extend here, all the way down to these um, final stitches. And you can put markers down here if you want to. Uh, if that helps you keep track, you can call them A and B, three and four, whatever you want. Okay, that's the basic mm -hmm. technique. First things first, let me show you the sleeve cap I've already knitted. Now you'll see up here, this is that um, upper portion of the sweater where I'm uh, set up my six stitches on either side. And this is all the way down to the armpit. And this section here is my sleeve cap. So you can see I've created a lot of extra fabric here. Then once I've created my sleeve cap, I can just knit my sleeve all the way down in the, in the round, all right? So let's take a look at the other side. So on the other side, what I have is an open armhole. And as promised, what I'm gonna do is pick up stitches from starting in the, uh, this will be my beginning of round in the armpit, picking up stitches here, placing my first marker here, knitting, picking up more stitches, another marker here, more stitches, till I've picked up all my stitches knitwise. Then I'm gonna purl one round, and then I'm gonna knit to this marker, wrap and turn German short row back here to this marker, wrap German short row, and keep going until I create a kind of uh, effect, that short row effect where there's fabric kind of cupped at the top of your shoulder here. Okay, so here we have all of the stitches picked up. And you can see down here, I have my beginning of round marker. This is the armpit of the sleeve. And up here and here, I have my short row markers, one and two, that I'll be using in just a minute. And I've already purled my first row. This is because it is a, this particular garment is a garter stitch garment, so I need to purl the first row because I'm working in the round. Okay, let me uh, knit around to those markers and I'll show you what we do with our short rows. Cue, fast forward. Okay, so I'm approaching the first marker and as you could see um, before, I was, I'm was using magic loop so I need to keep moving my loops around. Uh, but as I approach the first marker, I'm gonna knit right past it as if it's not even there. Slip that marker and keep going across those 12 stitches at the very top. Okay, so I'm almost to my second marker now. So I'm gonna knit right up to it, slip it, knit the next stitch, and then I'm gonna do my German short row. So I'm gonna turn my work. Try to get it so you can still see it in the camera here. And then uh, because I'm working in garter stitch, all I have to do is knit back, so I never have to do a purl uh, German short row. If I were to do a German short row purled stitch, I would just slip this stitch, 
wrap the yarn around like so, and then continue purling, creating this double two-legged stitch here. But since I'm just knitting, because I'm in garter stitch, I'm gonna slip that stitch, slip the marker, and then I'm gonna knit the next stitch, pulling this yarn tight and over top, and still creating that two-legged stitch right here that we'll take care of on our way back. So now I'm gonna knit back over to my marker that I skipped that first time, my first marker. Okay, I'm approaching that marker. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Slip it, knit the next stitch, and turn my work around. And this time, once again, the yarn is still in front. And because I'm doing a garter stitch, I'm gonna slip that first stitch and the marker, and then I'm gonna knit, pulling this up and over to create that double leg again, right there that I'll deal with on the way back. And as I get back to that other marker, I'm gonna show you how you deal with those. The nice thing about German short rows is that they leave, as far as I'm concerned, uh, very little holes. I, I sometimes find with wrap and turn, if you're not really careful, you can leave little holes in your work. Um, but German short rows do not do that. Okay, we're just about at the marker. So we're gonna slip our marker, and there's our double stitch. Just sitting there, hanging out. And we're gonna knit two legs together, knit another stitch, turn our work. And the same process continues. Slip that stitch, knit that stitch, slip that marker and go all the way back across to your other marker. And you just keep going, creating a nice uh, cap on the sleeve. So I'm gonna finish this up and I'll show you what the cap looks like before I go on to the next step. There's another one of those doubles. And them together, knit the next stitch and turn my work and keep going. And I'll see you back here once I have a sleeve cap. So I've made my last turn here. And uh, as you can see, I have one wrap German double stitch over here, four stitches here and four stitches here. This is my beginning of round marker. So I've turned it one final time. And all I'm gonna do now is knit uh, around. And anytime I encounter one of those double stitches from the German short rows. I'll just knit both legs together. So the first time though, we're gonna, because we did turn, I'm gonna slip and continue on. And I will fast forward you to the end. So I'm coming up on my last double stitch, which is right here, and I'm just gonna show you how I work it. I'm gonna go up through both legs you see that there? Let it go, and then just keep, instead of turning like I did last, like I have been, I'm gonna just keep knitting straight around through my beginning of round marker, which is right here. And I'm gonna grab my last final double stitch from that, that turn I made a moment ago. And it is right here, this guy. Do the same thing. Knit through both legs. And there we have it. Now this sleeve cap is ready for me to just knit around and around and around. And I've left my stitch markers in, you don't need to do that, but I've left them in so that you can see what's going on. So here's my shoulder seam. I'll hold it up this way so you can get a better look at it. Needles are jumping around. There's my shoulder seam, and there's my sleeve cap. So we started out with this hole that went all the way around here, and we've created this little kind of cone of fabric. See that? And you can see these are our original two markers, which were 12 stitches apart, and they're still 12 stitches apart. Uh, 
but you can see that from that original 12 stitches we've created this entire cap for the sleeve and I think it's one of the reasons I really love German short rows is that you cannot see those wraps and those turns. Well, I guess there are no wraps. You can't see those turns or those double stitches anywhere. And there aren't any holes. So it's just a nice looking sleeve cap. So there you have it. So I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash and this has been a quick tutorial on sleeve caps. And by the end of the video, I'm happy to say I have a sleeve cap on this sweater. So I'm gonna keep knitting down to the cuff and uh, use a few well-placed decreases to make it all work out. Uh, if you're interested in other tutorial videos, including knitting math, how to figure out how many stitches to pick up, how to modify patterns, all that kind of stuff, I have a bunch of videos up on YouTube. You can find me just about everywhere as Knitting the Stash, and I do run a podcast twice a month where I talk about garment design, modifications, and lots of other fun stuff, so you can join me there. In the meantime, thanks for hanging out for this tutorial, and I hope you find it helpful. Let me know if there are any questions. You can leave them below, and I try to answer them as soon as, as possible. Take care. Mm -hmm.